call this meeting of the RK Fiscal Court to, to order on this uh, 24th day of October 20, uh, 2017 at 5 p.m. I want to ask Brother Sonny Whiteley to come forward and lead us in a prayer and a pledge uh, to the flag. And I would love you to uh, remember our county clerk was injured today, best route in an accident at the courthouse. So let's give her some special remembrance. Yes, yes. Is this the mic you want me to use? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we come here tonight, Lord, we pray thy blessings upon this meeting. We thank you, Lord, for this body of people that come together, that have been elected by the people of their district to serve and to make decisions and choices for them in this county. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would meet with them tonight and be with them tonight as you have been with them in the past. I pray that you would be with them tonight and in the future. We need your help every day in our life. You have been so great to us. I pray, Lord, for best tonight. Oh, Lord, may you touch her and may you help her. Oh, God, we know that our great help comes from above. And we appreciate your goodness and your mercy. We appreciate all that you do for us. I pray, Heavenly Father, all of these blessings in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bless. Gentlemen, before you have the uh, minutes of the uh, uh, last meeting of September 26th, uh, do I have a motion to approve? Motion by Larry Morphew, second by Sam Small. Any discussion, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. Uh, before you, you have been presented, uh, already sent to you the Bills, claims, payments, and transfers. I need a motion to approve those. Thank you, motion to approve. Motion by Jason Bullock, second by Larry Town. Uh, any discussion or questions on the Bills, claims, payments, and transfers? Being none, roll call. Small? Yes. Fuller? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Uh, before you also, you have the treasurer's uh, 2017 financial statement. Uh, we just need to uh, acknowledge that she gave it to us. So moved. Motion to Sam Small. Second. Second to Joe Barnes. Any discussion or questions? Being not all in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, each of you have been given a copy of the uh, uh, Clark's uh, 2017 September financial statement. Uh, also, we need to uh, acknowledge that she gave that to us. So, I'll make acknowledge that we received the 
uh, motion by Larry Cowan, second by Jason Bolt. Uh, any questions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed like sign. Motion carries. Sheriff's quarterly report fee account. Uh, sh Sheriff, would you like to uh, present this? Deanna? Cumulative is $217,414.83. This quarter um, receipts were $45,453.61. This, this document as well that we've got. Motion to Joe Barnes. Second. Second by, I'll second it. Second by Jason Bullock. Uh, all in favor say aye. Uh, uh, opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Okay, Sheriff. Sure. Uh, Judge, I have one other thing here also uh, that I, I need to bring to your attention. Uh, I think Ann and I have talked about it. We have a little issue with a uh, line item in my budget. Uh, we're, we are uh, allotted $11,000 in contract inmate transport. And Buddy's handing you out a, uh, a list of transports that we've done since January 1. Um, of course, our budget starts in July, but we're having an issue with, with this money. Um, and the best way I can explain it to you is it's all of our out-of-state transports. This year, uh, to date, since uh, uh, January, we've been out uh, an extreme amount, $12,853. In transports my issue is that I have a line item for that eleven thousand dollars and then when I, I contract all that out it's a break-even deal for us it doesn't tie our deputies up um, we co contract with a company called PTS they will run to wherever whatever state uh, and you can see those uh, uh, well I didn't give you the list of the states we've been to but let, let me just run down through a few of them. Kansas, Florida, Delaware, Florida again, California, New York, Tennessee, West Virginia, Ohio, Tennessee. Um, those are since July. So my issue is, is when we get, we pay for this service, uh, we have to send them the money to go and get this inmate. The state will reimburse us because they are on felony charges and that all falls through circuit court. So I get reimbursed for moving those prisoners. Again, it's a break even deal for me. I don't have to tie cars or deputies going to these other states to pick them up. So we don't make any money, we don't lose any money. My issue is, is I only have $11,000 in this account and when I get paid back, I have to turn it into my fees account. So I turn it back over to 
uh, in with all my fees that Deanna just read you, and it doesn't go back into this account. So I have I have exhausted that account uh, because it doesn't. There's not any money that comes back in there, if you will. So we would like to set up a separate account, and I've talked to Ann about it, and she might can help explain it to me a little more, a little a little more in layman's terms, on uh, where we can. That will be a revolving account to where when we go and get someone and we get paid for it, after we've paid them to go and the state pays us back, that will go back into that account. So it will never be exhausted. It's a break even every time and it will just sit there, that amount, and we'll use it over and over and put it back, use it again, put it back. You just got it into the problem, Sheriff, of uh, lapse time. When you're, you're yes. Being put out. Well, and, and I can't put it back into that line item. It has to come through my fees account in my office, and then I turn that back over to you guys in those fees accounts. So but you're asking how then it's just a separate account. How yes. long how long does it usually for like one month, how long does it take before you get all paid back reimbursed? It, it usually takes about three weeks, I'm gonna say, from start to finish, usually. Uh, but you know, if there's some way at the end of the year that then we turn that back over to our whatever we do with those, you really have to have that much so in that revolving account. Yeah. It's going to go right back into it because if you're going to get reimbursed well, in a month, the easiest thing to do is okay. I will have to transfer into that inmate account as needed. Us, us. So when he gets the bill, I would transfer it in that account to cover it. So uh, just in the month of. Uh, Let's say, for instance, in July, we spent about uh, three thousand um, dollars. I guess the issue with is not having enough enough in there. If we go to several different places in one month, then we may not have enough to cover it. Okay, so not all of this is reimbursed. The seventeen hundred year out, you can't reimburse half of it. No, the, the state would get everything back. Now, some, some of these are local transports that you're seeing on this chart that I gave you don't get that we don't get reimbursed that for. That comes out of your $11,000 you had out in your... Yes. Okay, so yes. Would, okay. So that, that and, and those are district court runs, uh, uh, maybe some juveniles that we don't get paid to move. It's costing us money, but they are county charges and those are incurred by my budget that comes from the county if that makes sense to you the money you get from the state you would have pertained to the no witness fund is that correct Cause yes it would go back once once i let's say i paid pts to go and get a guy in california i may be out a thousand dollars to go get him for their bill or their services or i take that back probably two thousand dollars and then once I turn that in to the state and they send me a check back, I could put it back into that account. It, uh, it technically comes back into our uh, reserves account, our surplus account, and so yes. then it'd be a budget transfer at that time. Yeah. Uh, so that's where it actually would end up. Yeah. And then we would have to get it, which is back where it's coming from now. So it would end up technically Everything goes right, go right back into the account that we're yeah. on the break correct. out of now anyway. Correct. Is that correct, Dan? Well, other than the local transports that we don't get reimbursed right. for. But mm -hmm. once the state reimbursement, it'll end up back in there. Yes. What would we have to make that amount for? Well, I think the best way to do it on my books is just to authorize me to transfer into that account as needed. Uh, because there's no way to know. I mean, you can have 10 transports one month and none yes. the next month. Okay. So yeah. transfer, it, uh, transfer it in there as needed. And then yeah. at the end of the year, your fees should be over because of what you estimated. And then that goes back into reserves when we do the surplus thing. Okay. I would entertain a motion then to start a new account. And, and I will say it's unusually high. As you all yeah. know, we we've, we've, our arrests are up. Um, our thefts are up, yeah, our jail is full. <laughs> I mean, that that's just a sample to show you what what we've done and what, how many miles. I, I would have you to look at that uh, attention on there of those man hours that we've spent transporting since January. What, it's 700 and some hours. 
that's our guys on the road moving prisoners since January. So let, me, uh, let me entertain that motion then to, uh, for the purpose of that, uh, state prisoners, a special account be set up for that. Well, there is one set up called contract inmates, so that will serve the purpose. Okay, let, yeah. let the motion reflect that. I'll second it. And, uh, and, and to do the transfer as needed, correct? Okay, got a motion. Who makes a second? Yeah. Jody. Okay, we have motion second. Any questions for the sheriff? I do have a question. Just so I make sure I'm understanding this right. I understand what you're saying but on your sheet here. The transportation, the transport, is that through the company and then the mileage of what y'all actually put on your vehicle? Um, the mileage not captured on that is yeah. transports that we made that we just don't get paid for. And the miles that was recaptured, what y'all drove, but you did get paid for. That's what the state will reimburse us for. And, and in the transports here, that's where you use, how you use that company, right? The, the difference the between the two red and the two blue. The only thing that goes through that contract inmate account is exactly what they have paid a company no, and they turn around and bill it. I'm understanding that. I was just making sure. Oh, the, the others don't go through that. Well, we're talking about this this one and this two with the difference between there's the mileage <coughs> and then there's the transportation uh, total miles driven. Is that the... No, that's not the contract. Okay. The contract is a break even. Mm -hmm. Well, that, when we send them <coughs> that amount, that's exactly what the state reimburses us to go and get that person. The mileage and all the, the man hours or whatever that takes. The state will set a, a rate and it's if we send them a bill and say that we expect this much, they've got a set rate that they'll send us yeah, okay. on that transfer. Thank you. Uh, one other uh, issue, if, and I appreciate that, I, I thank you for your help on that, is the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, uh, we have the motion in the second. If there's no further discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Go ahead. Uh, we, before you have the, uh, well, I think Justin has the uh, interlocal agreement uh, contracts that we had gotten from the local cities. Uh, these are from the incorporated cities in the county that, that don't have their own police department. <coughs> Excuse me. These must be incorporated. Uh, Fordsville, uh, Rockport, and Mike Henry are three cities that are incorporated. We can get money from the state that says, hey, you don't have your own police department. We're going to send the sheriff's office money. And it goes back to hours that we can spend in that city because they're incorporated and they don't have their own police department we can get some reimbursement on that. So it'll help cover a few more man hours in those cities. I wish we could do it for all of them and get paid, but it's only incorporated cities that don't have their own police department. Okay, uh, the first one I have here to consider is Fordsville. If I want to have a motion to approve that one. And for the judge to sign. For the, for the judge to be authorized to sign the interlocal agreement. So move for the, okay. And the resolution number is 2018-9. Interlocal. Motion by Larry Cam, second by who? Sam. Sam Small. And I'll try to judge to sign it. Okay, all in favor of that one say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed like sign. Motion carries. <laughs> the city of McHenry motion by uh, and that's uh, resolution 2018-10 motion by Joe Barnes second by Larry Cam any discussion being none all in favor say aye, aye. opposed like sign thank you
Larry, there's a formula that they use, and we won't really know until we send that in to them. Uh, not a lot, I don't think. Uh, we talked to McLean County uh, next door to us, and they kind of put us on this, and we were excited to find it. Uh, but it, it's not a lot. Uh, I, I want to say, you know, per city, we may be looking at around a thousand dollars or less. Well, every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. Like yes. your counterpart, every little bit helps. Yes, <laughs> a lot. He needs a lot of help. <laughs> a lot. Of help. <laughs> a lot of help. Uh, okay, we, have we got a motion and second on that? It's a small one. Yeah. This. We already voted on that, Ken. Yeah. Now we need more than that. Okay, motion for Joe Barn. Second by Jason Bull. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. That one passed. Anything else, sir? I should do it. Thank you all for your time. We appreciate well, your help. Uh, thank you. Code 2018-2. Is there going to be a motion on that tonight or take on? Uh, Judge, let's, uh, we're going to have a closed session later. Uh, this uh, administrative code amendment has to do with personnel, so if we can, let's address that when we close session. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the resolution uh, for the pension reform. Each one of you have had a copy of that, I think, since the last meeting. Uh, so, what is your pleasure on that? On the administrative ordinance? No. Uh, oh. the resolution in support of the pension. You know, I read over that, and it's basically saying, hey, we want you to fix this, or maybe split CRS, split in the KR. But the, my only thing was, is I, and I saw what was, what was sent out this week, as a fix, and that if you're a teacher or you're a county employee, that's not what I want to endorse. So, I mean, that's one thing I'm worried about this is, I don't want to make sure that I'm endorsing the proposal he's got out right now, because what he's got out right now is not the promise we were made. Yeah, so, I want to see him fix it, but at the same time, I don't want to yeah. say I'm in support of it. And, and then something know. comes out like that, and then you're, what's been given to you is not what you're getting. Yeah, well, they come up with something that doesn't mean it's yeah. necessary. I think one of the problems with it, I think the KRS is in a whole lot better financial shape than the uh, oh, CDRS. CDRS. Well, CDRS is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know why they're asking us to separate it. Uh, maybe because the KRS is standing better, uh, financially better off than the uh, Well, there like the KERS, CERS, there's a teacher, KPRS, and then the state police has the, and each of them have a different, but. What this says is they're asking us to split up CERS and KPRS. What, the, what, what the resolution's all about. That's what they want to do, to separate the two. I think they're already separated. They're probably wanting you to combine them. Because CERS is pretty much stable. KERS is in trouble. Um, I think no. I think that they're wanting to separate the CERS. The oh, well, they're wanting to do that. You better vote. They're that. wanting to separate that. So if that's what it is, I mean, Justin, I think I read over, but I want to make sure that that's what it was. Give me a minute, Jason. Read so, over, if you will. Can we just table this right now, then? So, uh, wouldn't it take a legislative move from the state legislators? Yeah, yeah. 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 This is just a letter saying yeah. we support right. that. That's just to support it. Yeah. Yeah. Was this come from the magistrate? But I don't support much out there right now. Oh, no, I don't blame you. But it, it does say separating. It's, it's, uh, it's what they're asking for. The CEO In the last the paragraph, I think, or two, it says that. Uh, only, the down, only downside to that I've heard for us as county employees is that uh, uh, it would be it would require two administrative bodies to oversee it. You'd be doubling the staff of the administration. Uh, separating the two. Yeah. Be, 
a duplication of the thing they have on the boards. You know, we I I, I forget several. It's several. Yeah, it's at least nine on this board. Is it in, at least nine, I believe. I don't hold Does it. Doesn't the governor just put five new? He may have. There's several new people. But it's more to it. I don't know. Yeah, has there been any indication, Judge, that the governor will sign it if it, uh, if we, uh, as a court, we decide to recommend it? Uh, what I really believe, it's almost a moot issue because the legislative, both legislative bodies have had committee uh, meetings. They have a plan, and they're going to, they're not going to talk to a special session. Wait to January, and they're gonna. That they've got. They know what they're gonna run. So I think it's almost almost uh, irrelevant what we think. I would concur with the uh, fellow magistrate uh, if we just wait on this. Maybe I need to do a little more research as well. But I feel like that I do understand what they're saying is their separation, and this thing is I'm not exactly sure. My question is why the separation, and it doesn't go into that. Hard to leave something we don't know what we're supposed to do. Well, it's supposed to help county employees at the, and not teachers so much. I, I don't believe the separation is probably a good idea, but I'm just I'm afraid that I don't want to support something that's going to that what they're doing now because what they're doing now is not going to help anybody. I, well, I, my that's just. Well, I, I really, if I just make a comment about that, I think KRS is. In a lot better financial shape than the teachers do. That, that's what they say. Well, there's All different. Like, I think CERS, and I don't know, there's so many numbers called, is around 50 something percent, 56. The KTRS, which is the teachers, is around 53. And then there's the KERS, that's a lot, it's like 30 percent funded or something like that. So, do you know, Jason, whether they're paying the same amount of retirement in the teachers are paying the same amount of retirement in as? Uh, the county's obligation is. Well, no, I don't know. I'd say because we don't pay Social Security. The teacher probably doesn't pay. Yeah. 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 Well, it could be. I figured that's the question. Um, okay, let's just table this until okay. the next one. And also, your next thing on the SEDS report, uh, the, Kenny's not here. Uh, it's time to come up. So we're going to put that on the next meeting, the next agenda. So let's move right on. Uh, uh, next, I want to bring in uh, our officials from Tamerlane Industries to give us a presentation. So, uh, whichever, Kathy or Richard, whichever, who, whichever one of y'all want to talk, come on up, or both of you can. I just want to pass you out something that kind of expenses, payroll that we do, and then Rodney Alvin's a new board member. He's going to speak a little bit about it. And also have two employees that's been successful through Tamerlane. They'd like to share just a few minutes of their time, if you don't care. Guys, while he is uh, handing this out, I want to say I appreciate very much the opportunity to speak with you. And I speak on behalf of the Tamerlane board that's here and also speak on behalf of the, uh, the employees that are there. Um, I just want to encourage you that if you, uh, I know that most of you have been in or around Tamerlane Industries, but if you don't, if you've not been there, I'd urge you to take the opportunity to go over there and walk around and look and talk and, and see what's going on over there. And I've recently become a, uh, a member of the board and have been very interested to, uh, to see the things that are going on there. And uh, one of the biggest problems that we have at, uh, at the building site itself, now before I go any further, I want to point out that we are a 501c3. Okay, a lot of people don't know that, but we are a 501c3 and there are, um, it, there are, uh, physically and mentally challenged people that work there and the county uh, and uh, the county benefits a great deal from this and it's a it's a good thing it's a good thing and that's you know guys that's the first thing I want to tell you but uh, there's a lot of opportunities there that we're kind of struggling with because uh, we have um, a, a, an older building and we have some needs and uh, you know we're doing a lot of things trying to do a lot of new things that will 
uh, generate some income. And I just want to point out a couple of things to you first. Uh, 2016, our payroll was a uh, little over two, or right at two and a half million dollars. And in 2017, we're at 2.1 so far. And uh, you can see the taxes that have been paid in, uh, 24,000, almost 25 last year, and almost 22 this year so far. And uh, we, we tried to list just a little bit of the expenses of uh, some of the bigger businesses that we spend money with, uh, Beaverdam Building Supply, Keystop, that there's no way that we can give you a, a financial breakdown of the, of the impact that the jobs have uh, from the employees. So just want to point that out to you. It'd be hard to capture that number. But uh, we have some opportunities to expand some some uh, uh, jobs there and to, to do something, but we need some help with a roof problem that we're having. And I know that everybody wants money, wants money, wants money. We don't want money. We want to be able to create jobs. And, and I hate to say this, but it takes money to do that. I think that you all know that. Uh, and we've got 96 skylights in this old building, and a lot of, well, most of the skylights leak. And we're just needing some help uh, to be able to create some more dry area in there. With that dry area, we've got uh, people that will rent more of the, of the spacing there. So it's not something you're investing and there's going to be no return on your investment. We're, we're trying to be able to create a drier environment where we can uh, rent more spaces out and create more jobs. So uh, in just real briefly, I, I do know that we have calculated and I think Richard can speak to it a little bit better. It's about two hundred and eight to two hundred and twenty dollars, somewhere in that area, to fix each of these uh, skylights. And there's ninety six of the skylights. And uh, so we we just need some help in in that area. And what we try to do is just show you that we're not just asking for money. We're asking for the ability to 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 create jobs. So with that said, I'm going to just touch up for a minute, and I'm going to. Ask Richard if he'll come up just just quickly and address something, and and I do appreciate your consideration very very much. Uh, about twenty one thousand dollars to fix the line. Skylight, yes. Uh, yes. I have to say around twenty. Right. Uh, I don't know exactly. Two hundred twenty dollars is twenty one thousand. Two hundred forty. Two hundred. I thought two hundred eight. Twenty one thousand. I have them two twenty and ninety six of them twenty one thousand one hundred. Well, I've been at Tamerlane for 124 years. Uh, it's been a it's been a ride up and down. Uh, Tamerlane was kind of in the red when we came there. We've had some good years. We've had some bad years. But really, what what uh, Tamerlane is all about? It's about helping people. We're like a stepping stone. We have a lot of people that come through Tamerlane that <clears throat> they may come to your business, and you may not even give them an interview because maybe they have a felony for drugs or felony for this or a disability that maybe they couldn't do your work. But uh, they can come to Tamerlane and work for six months. And I call you back and say, hey, I got this guy, this lady's been there for six months. They come in every day. They got a great attitude. They're good workers. And the way to, way to getting people to employees these days, I believe you'd say, hey, send them out here and let me talk to them. But now, six months earlier, he might not even got the shot. So we deal with a lot of that. It's, it's costly for us. But we are who we are. We are here to help people and, uh, and to supply jobs. Basically, that's what we do. Uh, we deal with the physically mentally challenged adults to prepare them for competitive employment. We've had several success stories. I have a couple guys today kind of share with you a little bit of what we do. I'll share with you one guy, James Honor, who was working there when I came to Tamerlane. He was making $3 an hour. I worked with that boy when I was. 15 to 16 in the hay fields. He always took the hardest job in the vault. If anybody's ever put up square bales, it's hot. I knew he was a good worker, so I went to Purdue, talked to the supervisor out there, the manager. They gave him a shot in the box room. Two weeks later, he wanted to come back to Carolina because he just wasn't used to that environment. I said, James, you can do this job. He stayed home, ended up becoming the supervisor on the second shift. Work 10 more years and retired. So with that little push, that little encouragement, that's really what we're all about. So this time I'd like to allow James uh, Phelps to come up and talk to you about his experience with Tamerlane. Hi, everybody. Uh, some of you might know me. 
Uh, in 2001, I got arrested for a drug charge. Now I'm a convicted felon. Knowing when I got out of prison, I wouldn't be able to find no job, no decent job to be able to do nothing. Uh, I come to Tamerlane on a job search from the prison. He said if he hired me today, I couldn't come today because I was on, you know, still on home arrest. So he told me that as soon as I was able to do it, he'd put me to work. So I went to work out there for him, worked for him, never missed no days or nothing. Was able to go out to Dysel, uh through Tamerlane to be able to do some work out there. They liked my performance, liked my job, and they kept me out there. But if, in order for me to be able to do that, I went through Tamerlane to do this. But a lot of the places here in the county, I mean, even this small county, I mean, again, some of you know me, I'm born and raised here. I can't go to their facilities and get a job because I'm a convicted felon. You know, it, you know, we mess up in life, but Tamerlane gives you the opportunity to be able to create a new job for your own self and be able to present yourself better to the different people. I mean, I've been out there, my wife works out there now. You know, they give you the opportunity to be able to do better for yourself. They give you the chance, even though my wife, she has to miss a lot of work because she's taking care of her grandchildren. He, I mean, Richard looks over that and he knows the situation of this situation. So he don't look at some, you know, there ain't a place in the county that would allow you to come into work two hours late because you've got to take care of your grandkids. They ain't gonna let you do that. But Richard oversees that and he takes care of you. I mean, Richard, Tamerlane is, is a good place to work and also to be able to let people show, you know, to be able to get a start. Thank you. Thank you, James. Next gentleman is Josh Owens. Uh, I just want him to speak to you and share where he's came from in the last five years. Thank you. I appreciate the time. If I can lower this just a tad. Me being a former radio announcer and a preacher, you'd think I wouldn't be nervous to stand in front of people but, uh, and addressing people, but uh, my story's a little different than some. Give me some feedback. I don't know how to take care of that, but <clears throat> blindness is a hard disability to employ. And I'm not going into all the details about that, but uh, through uh, natural and uh, what's the word I'm looking for man made obstacles, there are some hindrances to me being employed gainfully, shall we say. I actually. Uh, realize as a born again child of God that as the brother said when he prayed every uh, good and perfect, perfect gift comes from above and the Lord does use people to carry out his will we are his agents in this world today as far as doing things uh, you know but I um, with my wife and I moved to Kentucky to be members of the church members that were members of Pleasant View Baptist of McQuaidy we've been there for July was five, has been five years. Didn't have a job, uh, couldn't get a job where I was, couldn't find one. And I uh, said, so maybe the Lord will provide something for us, trusty will, because we were in his will in, in the church, what we're supposed to be members at. Heard about Tamerlane through a member of our church, I believe. I might have seen the website where he's in Georgia. I don't remember, to be honest with you. But we came there, looked at the facility. Mr. Goodall said, as soon as you can get here, you got a job. And uh, that took a little while to get there, but the Lord moved us up on the list to get in a place and all that. Only had two children at the time. Now we have five of them on the way. Uh, so we had to get a bigger place for that, but that's for, that's for another, another time, for another minute there. But uh, moved here five years ago this past week. Started five years ago Sunday, which was Monday then. Started out peace rate, and for a long season was on that. But the Lord allowed us to... Uh, work to, uh, to uh, last to get to a minimum wage and then a little above that now. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for everything the Lord has done through He's used Tamerlane and others to be a source of provision for us through the years through our, for my ever-growing family. And uh, well, like I said, we just had the two girls when we first came here, but uh, Daniel was one who was on peace rate and then the others later on down the road. But uh, also uh, I never dreamed that 
home ownership would be in our future. Jess and I have been married for eight years. We figured we always ran for the rest of our life. But the Lord allowed us to uh, buy a place here in Hartford last year, actually a little bit over a year ago. And the Lord used Tamerlane and through my work there and uh, all that to uh, allow us to get that. And uh, now we have a home here. We uh, put down roots. And I don't know what the future holds. I don't, I don't know with my disability, I may be at Tamerlane for a long time, or I may be somewhere else. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not going to cut. I'm not going to cut my nose off spite my face. But uh, I just uh, Lord help me. I'm going to keep going and doing that. He had me to do to take care of my family. One thing about Tamerlane, as far as working there, as a as a husband and a daddy and a Christian, I have a uh, me have meaning for my life as far as working, doing what God has created me to do, and that's work to provide for my family. And the Lord used, has used Tamerlane to do that for us over the past five years. And uh, Mr. Goodall asked me to speak personally, and I can't speak for anybody else, but I can speak for me and tell you what the Lord has used Tamerlane to do in my life. He has used it as a means of uh, employment and a source of uh, provision for our family over the years and uh, he's provided other ways but he has used Timberland as a source of means of employment and it uh, it's gratifying to go out of the house every day and you know, I'm providing for my children and wife so she can take care of them and all that and we have a home and uh, we've the Lord's just blessed us and he's used, he's used people to do that <coughs> excuse me to do that over the years and I'm I'm thankful for what the Lord has done. I, I, all I have to do I, I, is to brag on Him. That's the only thing I have as a child of God to do as far as what I desire to do. But He uses people. I'm thankful for who and what He's using these days. Thank you. And uh, I have watched you do your assembly work, and uh, you're you're pretty fast. <laughs> hey, buddy. Somebody's trying to get in. Somebody's trying to get in the back door. I don't know if it's locked or. I've been to uh, Cambridge lots of times, folks, and uh, I watch what they do, and uh, it's a it's a pretty slick operation. And I remember one time here was asked uh, what percentage of their workers were uh, disabled. I would actually say one way or another, a hundred percent, because if, if they're physically, or or I, I'm I'm not trying to put anybody down, but they're hardcore unemployed uh, for whatever reason, and uh, Richard gives them a chance, and many times they're they're successful, uh, and it's just a wonderful thing for us to have in a community, and if you guys could see fit, I'd love to help. Them. With the roof and some equipment and stuff that we need, try to create new jobs. We like to ask the, the physical court for about thirty thousand. So if you guys could put that over, uh, Richard, we have a program, you know, through the county that uh, has a very low interest rate. And uh, I wonder if there's something you guys, since you're going to add on to the employees, we entertain in doing. Uh, and then I think that uh, I, I'm personally speaking for myself. But, I agree with the judge, and I think you guys do a great job out there, and I'd like to help. But we probably can't help that much in this in this fiscal year, but I think that we could probably help someone along each year. Okay. But if you, and Sam would be the individual that you probably need to talk to to head in the right direction to chase and, and see what you come up with on, on getting the skylights fixed. Right. And then hopefully we can to have some little, somewhat financial support to help family. Well, I'll just tell you right up front, our, our uh, paying on loans is not something I'm looking to do right now because of the fact that we do have a loan at the banks where we uh, bought some equipment and done other stuff. And we're, our budget doesn't, would not support much of another loan at all. So. What do y'all do with your money? You see, we all took in a lot. And the expenses don't seem to be that much. Well, you don't have all the expenses on there. I mean, there's, you know, utilities, uh, repairs that we do ourselves. 
if you need a breakdown of that, uh, I have no problem giving you one. That was just an idea. That was just to, to give you an idea of what we put back into the uh, the company. You know, we had to spend a lot of money at Walmart. We, I don't have that on there either. But there are other expenses that that you don't see. But uh, if you want to see a financial statement, you're welcome to see me. Quite a bit. Well, it takes a lot of money to run 205 people. So. Right now we're running 205. We go up and down to, to about 175 and then back up. And like uh, Rodney said, we're looking to put on a few more people to uh, generate some more work. I know the two pre past previous courts we used to. Is there any way that you could look that up and kind of see what we did in the last? We used to give 10,000. No? Is that what it was? I couldn't remember how much we used to give. Up until last year we did. Ever since I've been here we did. I think I we cut it down to five, had not we, Richard? Then we brought it up. It had been 10. It's always used as 10, I think. Y'all are considered a profitable business, so correct? No, sir, we are not. We are not profit. Right. So it's the 501c3. A lot of people, give, a lot of people uh, are mistaken by that non-profit 501c3. The only thing that helps us with is we have to buy materials or something we have to purchase. That's the only break we get on taxes. You know, your fuel and everything else. That, you know, we pay just like anyone else. So let me put in some, Richard, how many windows are in dire? Really dire need now, but uh, the skylights you're talking about? Yeah, skylights. All of them. We pay. We we did a renovation about nine years ago. Put a new roof on the Seven hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. We put a new roof on that building. Uh, there was a discrepancy on who was going to do it, but the company ended up doing it out in Indiana. Can't take the name right off the top of my head. Uh, did not do a very good job, and we come back and push. The judge wasn't there then, but we. Come back and try to get them to hold up to their end of the contract and end up nothing was ever done. I did all I could do, turned it over to the courts because the money come through the physical court and we ended up with what we got. So we're trying to, uh, to do the best we can do to repair it because if we don't get these fixed, especially like with Dice their area, they just store parts there, their raw materials, if they get wet, they're no good. So, uh, in order, I mean, they rent out a certain amount of space every month. So in order to keep the space that we got and to also rent more area, we have to get these like, skylights fixed. How much yeah. do they pay for rent a month, do you know? Right now, uh, Dice will spend about 5000 a month. How many, again, Richard, I didn't get an answer, how many is in dire need of skylights? All of them are in dire need. If you see a skylight, I guarantee you you'll see it. Now, just to get the history right, Nine years ago, you got money from the court. Seven. Well, it was, it was the court. court. It came through the court. It came through the court. It was GBC. It renovated. It put a whole new roof on it in nine years. Well, there wasn't like a new metal or anything. They could, they went up and they put in a put in a mesh and then they put a coating over that and they painted it. They took out all the old skylights. They took anything that was protruding from the building and replaced the metal in those areas. Uh, but no, it's not a new roof. Is the roof leaking or is it just the skylight? Ninety percent of the leaks are from the roof. I mean, I'm sorry, from the skylight. We only have two areas that I know of right now that don't have a skylight to, that's providing a leak. So is this replacing the skylight completely or just repairing? Just repairing. They guarantee it's out there out of Morgan Town. They guarantee they can fix the lights, skylights not to leak. So. Is there a guarantee on their work? Yes. That's what they're telling. How long is the guarantee? I don't have an actual amount yet, but some of them we're going to do and let them do and just see how it does. Still doing them, trying to, still paying them to do it all. We're going to do a few, let it rain, you know, like maybe five in some areas that where we have people actually working in that we need to fix right away. And then we'll let a good rain come or whatever and see how they hold up. And uh, those are some of the worst. So if they do good, don't leave, then we're going to go ahead with the rest. Well, can we give you the five windows right now and see how it does? And then you come back with a report telling us how it does? And then is that something that you're only going to do five right now? Well, we're going to actually do more than five because we got to do uh, Dyson's area. But these five are yeah. over in an area where we have a lot of employees that we definitely need to get fixed right away. And how many of those? 
Do what? I'm sorry. How many of those in that particular area? Yeah, well, in the area where the people are actually working at the moment, there's five. Right. So what that, about that's the uh, $1,100 and 220 the DASO has uh, 28. <coughs> there's 25,600 and something like that. Is there any, I don't know, that's the court feels about it, but has anybody got a little extra money left in the discretionary end of it? I know. Well, uh, I think we probably should at least do these that you're talking about so they can save the, the dicell account I mean, and keep their work at 5600 uh, If we could at least I think we, that, if we're going to do that, let's go ahead and do the five where the employees work too. That's what I said. That is, is Does that the, include that? Jason, do you have any? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I could do a little bit. I'll pick up Larry's part. Do what? I'll pick up Larry's part. So you want to see what that would be divided six ways, if they're all one Well, I'm getting, for 28 windmills and 220, it's 6,160. 6, yeah, oh, okay. A little more than I say, 6,160. Okay. I can, I can, since it's in my district too, I, if I have to pick up a little bit more, I will. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, what? Uh, 60 below the 60. It's $1,027 each. $1,027 each, and uh, Larry, Moore, Larry County can't pick up Lori. Larry Moore, put me in for $2,052. Thank you, I appreciate it. And put me down for that chair. Larry, I'll go ahead. Larry, I was going to say, I don't, I'll, 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 i will i I've got that much put in. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Okay, the, what? So, $1,027. Okay, we're back to that. 1027 from each six. About now, six, right? We can do this this one time, but I mean, you know, we're, we're all getting a little tight on money, so very tight. You know, I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to, you know, I'm kind of like in the town, maybe go to the OCDA and see what, you know, options they could give you on a long range payment for the rest of the windows, but okay. so uh, what we're saying Ann, is from divide it and I'll, let's make a, uh, have a motion for Ann to write that check. Motion by Larry King. I'll second, second the vote. Uh, second the who? Sam Paul. Well, I really do thank like Richard, you guys do a good job and help with this table. Thank you, I appreciate it. And it is a stepping stone for a lot of people to get in those. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries, and I, for one, will certainly be talking to y'all and see if we can find out other options. Thank you. Let us know, Richard, how the how the uh, skylines work out for one thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, just once back up, he was talking to explain that resolution out of these guys' mind around. Uh, yeah, I, I was able to read it. The main thing is what they're saying is there's the CERS, which is the county employees, city, and uh, various uh, individuals in that retirement system. The KERS, everybody knows, is uh, comprised of the Kentucky State Agency employees. There's two or three agencies in there, too. And, well, and then the state police yeah. is the SPRS, and they have their all separate system, too. So there's, those three systems are separate, okay? However, there's one board that oversees those three separate uh, systems uh, with regard to their decision making. Um, 17 board members are, are, are on that, and that board is identified as KRS. Only six of those are uh, members of either the CERS, KERS, or the SPRS, if you see what I'm saying. So out of your representation on the board, you only have six. Uh, the rest are govern governor appointed. Uh, governor Bevan then made his appointments um, to this board, which would then have the majority. Uh, when you look at KERS, that's 18, it's around about almost 19% that they put in. And um, 
out of the 19%, the Kentucky State Legislature were in the government throughout the last 15 of the 22 years didn't fund that appropriately. Uh, they used it probably for other uh, things, but they didn't fund it appropriately. While the county, the CERS, which is the county, cities, and those, you paid your portion. It just didn't fund it as you probably hoped. And so that's 58%. Um, I, th I guess there's concern in what the board may do, and that is uh, why they asked for this resolution. So if you look at the now therefore, uh, there's two now therefores, um, which is first, you're just asking that the state pay all employees of either CERS, KERS, SPRS, or any other retirement systems, they pay their retirees as they promised them and as, the, as their contract called for. So that's the first resolution. Uh, the second resolution would indicate that you do not want to be a part of the KRS board, which is a combination of CERS, KERS, and SPRS. In a sense, you want your own board who would make decisions on funding, uh, participation, uh, payments um, uh, of CERS employees. So they're asking for your own board to make decisions on your own behalf as opposed to, uh, you know, I guess nine or uh, 11 uh, individuals that would be appointed by a Democrat or Republican government. Okay, is, is anybody uh, had, had the pleasure of anyone to make a motion on the uh, resolution now? If there's not, uh, at least we understand it better. Are you sure? I don't think I do. Well, what, what they're trying to As long as it's not endorsing the new plan, I understand what it's trying to say. They want to separate and get their own board. They want to separate and get their own board. They're not talking, they say, as far as the plans, they say pay everybody like they're supposed to. But they, but they say make us a separate board where we control our own destiny. Um, right now we're under. Thing. Everybody else is. Because you know, what the government's making the majority of appointments, they're going to go with the government. I think that's the smartest thing to do. Get your own separate board. That's what uh, the, the KCOs recommend right here. And I think the, I've talked to one of the cities, and, and I think they would like to. That's all I want to make sure. If that's what that is, that's fine. I don't want to endorse the plan that they're throwing out there now because that's not good. I mean, it's really not good for anybody. Sounds like this This is dismissing that plan and, and staying with the yeah. old. Yeah, it's just saying pay everybody yeah. like your contractor. Stay, stay safe. Yeah, that's all I'm asking to enforce. What and that's kind of what I thought it was, but I didn't want to sign something to make sure that we were endorsing a plan that he had proposed out there right now. Uh, yeah, I don't see it would really be detrimental because I'm also part of CERS. Yeah. I don't think it would be detrimental this resolution in any way. This is something the governor's not initiating. I, I mean, that's, I just want to make sure that his plan that he's proposed right now, what they're this looking to do, doesn't have the anything to do with this. This but, is from KK. Yeah, yeah, they're just wanting to separate from you. Know, I understand why. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just it's just simply giving your indications of what you hope. I think I think he certainly the governor certainly indicated he's going to make some amendments to the retirement system. You're asking that he just pay everyone as Kentucky has promised, with no changes in what we did. Without any changes, that's that. If it's saying without any changes, you know that's kind of <clears throat> well. Is there anybody supposed to make a motion on that? If not, we've talked about it a long time, so. If, if there's no motion, we'll move on. Uh, the next thing is uh, the bids for the building at the road department. Uh, Larry Kim, Larry Morphy, would y'all open those and bring them to us? We have two. <coughs> Thank you. 
there's two, three different things. So you have to add the three together. No, no. You add them together, but there's two separate things. I know, but still, it's just for apples and apples. They list two things. Yes, they do. They do. Okay, they uh, add these up for someone. Okay. Separately, but it always is total, and the Lambert guarantees the total. And they contract with those 38,766 for the five inches uh, subcontractors. Mm -hmm. So it's just a thousand dollars more. Yeah, Yeah. 
one of the things that we need to check in is praying to write the checks and praying to write the checks. That's on so. approval from on approval from Keith. Yeah. I think one of the things when it comes down to concrete, one, one of the most important things of the building is make sure that uh, not that they didn't. I'm not sure what they're when they're saying four or five yards, or they're putting any fiber in it, or they're putting any steel in it, because I do know concrete once it's sailing, it may crack, but it'll pull apart. Uh, it's fiber, I'm pretty sure. Well, the Beaver Dam said fiber and half inch. Yeah, they put half inch steel. That works. Uh, half of the saw, too. Yeah. Now, Lam uh, Lambert just built buildings for me, and I've never had one to try. A guy named David Head does all of their, uh, he's out of uh, Grayson County, he does every bit of their concrete uh, work. And if he wants to repeat service, if he does a good job, I just, I've just seen a lot of concrete in the Well, if you don't, if you have to do some fields, you don't pack that, that's what you need, the concrete will put Can you spell Lexington? Let alone what it is. <laughs> no, Keith will take it. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, so it's going to be Keith Nelson, Marty Tishner, and Walt Beeson. How long is it? Uh, uh, two tenths, I believe. They will give the exact measure when they do it. At least two tenths. It's in a little subdivision out there, and we took all the rest of them in. But I think it may not be the standard then. It's been fixed up now. Okay. Um, uh, we want to point some people to the park board. We're, got, we're completely redoing them. Uh, I don't have a... Uh, uh, Larry Morphew, you don't have me a name yet, do you? Yeah, but, okay, give it to me. Uh, Joanne Sanford. Joanne Sanford. Uh, 
Okay, we're going to do three tonight. Uh, from the 5th District, Joanne Sandifer. So we just, uh, that's my appointment. And uh, the, your, the master's my district uh, uh, gave me the name. So <coughs> uh, just roll call voting. No, I'm doing it, uh, but you got to do it separately. And from the uh, uh, first district, we're going to point Leslie Gibson. Just roll call. Small. The only you got. Yes. 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 And from the uh, second district, Anthony Gary. Small. Yes. Pull up. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Uh, and from the 4th District, Helen Deaver. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Keon. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Okay, and the next board meeting, we will do one for the 3rd District. Joe hasn't got a chance to talk to the person that he wants to put on there yet. Well, I'm waiting here. They're uh, still considering. Okay. Um, I'm not prepared to, we had on the agenda to do the Animal Control Ordinance Committee. Uh, I need to get with uh, Kevin on that and uh, look and see who was on it before. The only one I remember for sure that Jason was. Jason represented the fiscal court on it and, and we'll see who, who's still available that was on it before that might want to serve. And I'll talk to you about it before the next meeting. Um, right now, we need to go into a closed, uh, uh, a short closed session under KRS 61-810, Chapter 1, Section C and F. Motion second. second. All uh, in favor, join me in the room right behind the face. Everybody motion, everybody second. So right now, too, we're going back in. We're back into open session. Uh, the only things we discussed was uh, litigation, a uh, possible litigation, and uh, uh, personnel. And from that, I've got some uh, things to put on the floor. Uh, the first one is for uh, Steve Everly at the road department. Uh, put him at mechanics pay at 1583, effective July the 30th of, uh, of uh, 2017, which would mean back pay. Uh, so, uh, I, I just need a roll call on that. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Keon. Yes. Morphy. Yes. The next one is a, is a road department as well. This is because of probationary period ending. Um, he was, it's Jason Burden and he'll go to um, a 1480 per hour. Um, so, uh, I, that roll call again. What's it go up to? Fourteen eighty. Yes. Same thing. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. 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 Okay. The next one. Same thing. Probationary period ended. Bobby Jackson, road department to fourteen eighty. Roll call. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. 
Johnson? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, the next one is because of time, five years of service uh, to, uh, for uh, Renetta, Renetta Romero. Uh, and her pay, red pay would go to seventeen thirty six an hour. And this would be effective uh, like 10.3, like this week. Uh, yes. Yeah, roll call. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. 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 The next item I have will require a second, but I'm making the motion that we uh, uh, put our uh, payroll clerk slash HR person on the training incentive program uh, similar to what uh, we're all on. So I need a second for that. I got a second, but either Larry, you want to get here. I'll second it. Just make sure that we look at the one thing I was talking about. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. We will. Uh, roll call. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. 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 Okay, and this was effective uh, this year, 2017. Um, Joe? Uh, as uh, chairman of the Wage Committee, I would want you to call a meeting before the next meeting, or you get Renetta, but since you're the chairman, you officially call it. I want y'all to have a meeting. We're going to bring two issues to you, which I'll give to Renetta, and she'll give them to you. Do I need to give you a time of day right now, or can I give no, them? No, you give them. Okay. You can do it just before the next court meeting, but after you see what it is, if you need more time, and you want to have a meeting before then, you can. Okay. And, uh, Okay. We're down to any other committee reports other than the ones we've already made. Larry made his early on the road. If not, we're ready for magistrate's uh, comments and requests. We're ready for saying. Uh, Jason, I just got I was got a request for a water bid or fire hydrant. Did, did you give David the other one on Stanley or? Yeah, I'll yeah, that one. I need. I just could copy that one. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, Joe. Yeah, I've got one thing. I need to make a motion to uh, uh, five hundred dollars out of my discretionary for the uh, Eccles Church. I mean Eccles Children Christmas party. And it's just out of my discretionary. So. I'll second that. And I'm here. Okay, and I, I'll put that in a second too. So go ahead and hit that. Uh, go ahead and roll call. Just, just put the whole down. Surely that's just discretionary, man. Surely there won't be things. Let's just say all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Like sign. Motion carries. Anything else? No. Larry? Yeah, I have one thing. Uh, I understand that the insurance company settled with us on a pothole patcher. I didn't know that. What, how much was it given? It was in the transfer of 21,000? Okay. 22.5. Okay, go ahead. Well, that's 22.5. We got to keep the old pothole patcher where it has an enormous amount of uh, parts on it for the one that we currently have. But I'm going to advertise for a bid uh, for a second pothole patcher. And uh, we need to try to find one. And it, it needs to it needs to save a used one because uh, you know we've been through this before about we bought a new one years ago the new models the engineering part of it didn't work out and we've had real good success with the old 2000 that we had so i would like to I'd entertain that motion to advertise so like we've say. been looking online and we've got some and dennis has as well and yeah uh, you can have them in the mail up in their bids but we'll run the local paper yeah so same second Sam, the post for Larry County second by Sam Small to advertise for a used pothole pasture. Any further discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Most okay. Go ahead, Bill. Larry. Uh, Keith, did you get a chance to look at uh, the information I brought you back on the, uh, or you said it would take what two men to run? Yeah, yeah, it would take an extra man on this. But they're about half. <coughs> <right. coughs> you see it like? 
You see that one? No, and, and they're less parts too. Right. I mean, they don't break down as much. Well, here's what you've got, gentlemen. You've got a, a piece of equipment that utilizes two people. One of them has to be out in the heat all day long. They're going to get nasty from one end to the other. And uh, I just, I just, I can't justify both for one of them because of just the two people that it takes, one in the truck, one outside on the spray room. And then uh, where you have one that sits up in the truck, air conditioned, and sits there in the auto patch all day long. And I see comparing the price to, for you to have to buy that too more likely and comparing the price to the auto patch you need more of Yeah. And we do need two of them for, I think we, the court failed is when they had two in Cincinnati. We didn't buy both of them at, uh, at a good price, of course. Unfortunately, that one from the burnout, that one? Yeah. That was the best one. Yeah, unfortunately, the one bought in Cincinnati is the one burnout. Did the insurance company ever figure out what happened to it? Not that I know of. Okay. Hey, hey, I got something when they get done. Okay. Larry's still got to pull out here. Uh, I don't know, a couple of meetings ago, I brought up about we wasn't advertising for the fishing and hunting and they both uh, are still hanging on your door over. Yeah. That needs to be added. And, yeah. Uh, you know, that's, that's, part of, that's part of tourism, too. Yeah, remind me, uh, Miranda, to uh, give that to Jody. I don't think I did. You did. I'll give it to my brother. That's all right. Okay. Jason, I've got a quick question. A couple of The house at uh, Horse Branch. Any bids come in on that? Or? We, uh, Joe's going to help me get the thing to advertise it. We have not said, so it's not been in the paper. Uh, uh, we need to get a legal description sort of okay. uh, advertise it. I was curious about that. We got it laid out over the moment, but he'll need to measure it and okay. give us a description of it. Uh, I did say something about that. We I want to keep the, drive, the driveway that went through the circle driveway to the center, so we're going to measure it where actually yeah. the place is going to have another driveway probably. I mean, they can pull in the yard apart. I was just curious. I hadn't heard anything. It's been yeah. three weeks or so. We're, so. we're waiting on that. Uh, we can get on to our son go up Okay. How are they coming on to the double A? I have not heard it's supposed to happen last week, but I haven't been up there to see. Uh, I mean, she, she's not here, and I don't know, but it's supposed to be happening. And, uh, Mr. Mr. Fisher, I'm sorry I missed the uh, thing you had last Saturday. I, or you out there? Did it go yeah. well? Yes, it did. You know, actually, unfortunately, there were several of us out of town due to fall break, and uh, I missed our two, and I was going to come. Absolutely. The best chicken I ever ate. Oh, yeah? Absolutely. Did you cook it? No, no Capers did. did. Who did? Capers. Capers did. Oh, yeah. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a good day. A very, a, it was a sad day. Because we lost one of our uh, uh, folks out there had passed away in the beer that week, but uh, it was still uh, it was still a good day, and uh, they really were a good host for the day. So if you've been there, you got the plane. Right? I hear that. Well, we appreciate what you're doing. That's important. Yeah. Uh, we also got the seven hundred on the ambulance that we were at. So if you all can just jump. They got everything out of it. We salvaged it back. If you could declare it surplus, Charlie and I are going to put it on gun deals when we get rid of it. Okay. Move to everything. Move to put it in surplus. Second. You got the motion. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Most like that. What this is really all about. And we'll try our hand at the computer on that sale thing. So, just look. He wouldn't let us sell anything else. Yeah, wouldn't let us sell those things. Okay. We were trying to get him to sell something, Does anybody from the uh, general audience got anything for the good of the body? Being done, this means adjourned. I had something, but you didn't give me time to speak. We don't want to hear you. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh,